today I'll be teaching you how to create this render. And so I actually missed like a time doing it. It's just uh, I accidentally stopped the recording when like at the very beginning of the last one. It was very annoying because I got through the entire thing. But this is our setup. Very simple. And this is actually done entirely through displacement. So we're going to do barely any modeling here. And there's that version. Clouds are beautiful. And this version. So let's jump straight into it. I'm just going to create a new file. First thing I'm going to do Alt R, Alt G, R, X, 9 D, G, Y, move it back, G, Z, move it up. Zero, numpad zero for moving the camera. Hold down middle mouse button to rotate view. Zoom in and out with middle mouse button. Select with left click. Open menu with right click. Shade smooth, shade flat. Alt middle mouse button does that. Shift moves. Control. Another way to zoom in and out. Shift tilde does this. Let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to delete the default cube as per tradition. Now we're going to add in a cube, subdivision, subsurface in our modify properties, 7, 7. This is just going to give us some extra geometry to add our displacement on there. It's very useful. Uh, and it will work without it. Now you may be saying, delete the, well, first delete the cube. Why won't you just add a sphere? Because the sphere, if we press tab to go into edit mode, it has poles, and these poles mess things up, kind of. And it's just better to use a cube also. It's cooler just because then you can say that entire planet is a cube. So first we're going to add a cube. Do the whole thing again. And we're not going to really worry about the scene yet. We're just going to go into shading. So first we're going to add a new material. We're going to call it planet. And we don't really care about this yet, so we're going to drag that out of drag that out of here. So I'm going to make it I'm going to add a displacement shift a search displacement. Drop that in there. Mid level 0. And we're going to go in there and it looks completely normal. We can do that, it doesn't do anything. The reason this is happening is cuz we actually have to go into cycles for displacement to work. So, render properties cycles and we have to go into material settings displacement only and it's still not doing anything that's because we haven't added any displacement look at that beautiful what we're going to do is we're first going to add a noise texture now, the noise texture is important it's going to control our terrain so we're going to take this noise texture i'm going to drag it into the height and voila we have our planet we're done not really we want to bump the detail up to 16 so we have some more detail. I'm going to turn the roughness down a bit. Just 3 8 is what I used in the original, and we're going to distort it a tiny bit just to make it a little bit more squiggly because it looks nicer. We're going to make this noise four-dimensional, which means we can slide it along an invisible W axis, which allow that is the wrong, which means we can slide it along an invisible W axis, which allows us to modify the terrain a bit each time if we want to use new terrain. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a value node. We're going to shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to call this one with F2 seed. We're going to call this one detail. We're going to drag the detail as the scale. It's going to control how much detail we have in the seed. It's going to be bad. We're going to set detail to 5 by default. See, it doesn't really matter, and this means we have an easy way to control the amount of detail in the seed, and this is going to be useful because later we're going to have to use these multiple times, and instead of going through and changing each time, we can just have these values. I just use shift right click, by the way, if you have Node Wrangler on, and it allows you to turn things into these routes like that. I combine those right there. Node Wrangler is really useful. I'm going to be using it a lot, so you can just enable that by file uh no uh edit edit preferences add-ons node wrangler there it is so we have this and we're going to want to adjust a bit so shift a color ramp and like that we're going to set it to b spline and we're going to drag it up a tiny bit around 0.9 ish 0.1 that looks good. It's not going to modify much. By the way, another cool Node Wrangler thing, Control shift click It allows us to look at it. It just makes it a little tiny bit darker. Uh, yeah. 
you really want to do something like that, you can do that. But I just, it's just a small change. It works. So I'm going to put our diffuse back on there. So this is what we're going to use for our terrain. That's really it. After that, all we have to do is we just have to add the oceans and then all the coloring. Then there's some additional stuff like atmosphere and clouds, and then we can set up the scene. First thing I'm going to do for ocean, I'm going to add a musgrave texture. And that's because it looks like that. And so we have the musgrave. And this is where we're going to reuse our seed and stuff. We're going to set musgrave to four dimensional. We're going to set seed to W, detail to de scale, to scale. Set detail to the highest possible because we like detail. Set dimension to one, just give it a little more roughness around the edges, but not too much. And those are our oceans. We're, to make it a bit more cut off, we're going to use a math and then a greater than node. Now this greater than node just basically controls how much we're letting through. It's all the areas that's greater than. So we're going to duplicate our value node. We're going to call this C level, and it's going to control how much ocean we have. Zero by default, and it gives us a healthy amount of ocean. Now we're going to use this value multiple times, so I'm just going to oops. So I'm just going to put that into a reroute for now. First thing we're going to do with it is we're going to cut it out of our terrain so the oceans and the terrain don't overlap. We're going to invert it. So instead, we just have everywhere that the uh, ocean is not. Then I'm going to drag these over here. I'm going to add a mix RGB. I'm going to mix these two together with a factor of around 0.9. Then you might have been able to tell it cuts out the ocean area. It's a bit easier if we look. This is where all the terrain is. You can see there's a gap there. And if we use that, you can see that there's a. It's not being entirely cut out, but it's being cut out by a majority. We still want a bit of bumpiness in the ocean, though. Otherwise, it looks weird. Okay, so that is our entire terrain. Now, all we have to do is we just have to add coloring. The way I did colors is I did this whole layer system. And I'm really quickly going to check to make sure we're still recording. That is good. I did this whole layer system where it was like five or six layers, and then it was all added together. But, yeah, but we're only going to do three height vertical color layers. First thing I'm going to do, shade smooth, right click shade smooth, and go to here, normals, auto smooth. It just works. It just works. Okay. Then we're going to change the lighting a bit. So I'm going to go to here, set it to sun. Uh oh, my eyes are on fire. Do it like that. Go to world, bump it up a bit. There, there, transparent. Okay. Didn't really need to know that much because we're going to be changing the lighting up with an HDRI later, high definition render imaging, something like that. And it just allows us to really easily import some nice realistic lighting. But until then, we're going to have this. So I'm going to save this really quickly in case I do something stupid and crash. I'm going to save this like a. I'm going to save this like something like a. All right. And so now we have this planet thing, but it's all white. So first thing we're going to do. We're going to add in our oceans. We're going to add in the oceans by taking a mix RGB. And here, we're going to use that value again. Uh, I'm actually going to move all this over. And so we have our, I'm going to use this value right here. I'm going to drop it. Set it all up, set the factor to one, set it to multiply. And then we're just going to drag this into base color, that's subsurface base color. Now you see it's black except for where the oceans are, and we can change this to whatever color we want. To make it more easy to access, we're going to put an RGB over here, drag that ooh, and drag that in as the color, and voila, we have our ocean color. Now uh, this is very strange looking ocean. It's the same thing as the terrain, all the specular and stuff is weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this value right here and we're going to drag it up to the metallic and the specular options. Uh, cut these really quick like that. But that's a little 
intense, and it almost looks kind of, oh god, it almost looks kind of silky. So I'm going to drag a math node in here, multiply by 0.5 like that, which makes it a little less intense, I should say. Also, turn the roughness down to zero, so it looks more liquidy. Voila! Now we have our, uh, yeah, we have our oceans in there, but the rest of the world is darkened. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to start building up our layer system. First thing we want to do is we want to drag that back there a bit. We're going to want to create a bunch of color ramps, which are going to represent our layers. And drag up, drag up. So we're going to have three layers, which is going to be the uh, grass layer. Then there's going to be the mountains layer. And then there's going to be the... Uh, I don't know what to call it, the, the snowy area of the mountains. So our grass layer is just going to be everything before. Uh, let's just make this 0.5. And then, so this is where our stone layer starts. It's going to start at 0.5. And it's going to end at 0.75. So we're going to set this to black. I'm going to trim that a tiny bit, so 0.377, and then we can set this to like 0.377, so it just makes less, less of a fade. We have this, and what did we set this to? 0.75, so this will slowly fade from 0.75 to that. And for all the, and for the factor, the entire time we're going to use our noise texture, so to make it easier to access up here, I'm going to add a reroute, and drag it. Drag it into all of these. And then drag that up there. Now, progressively ramps up. And I might want to make it a bit more inclusive. And for this, and tone it up a bit. So this would be like 0.636. Then, uh, yeah, 0.5. That's 0.5. Kick that up to wherever this is, 0 0.5 0 0.541. And now we have our layers. So down here, first, really quickly, I'm just going to call this ocean color. And so I'm going to duplicate this three times. One over, we're going to call these layer one, layer two, or just nothing, layer two, and then layer three. And for layer one, we want it like the green grass. Layer two, we want some stone like color. Layer three, white. The way we're going to composite all this together is first, we're going to drag this down here. Second, we're going to not use that we're going to actually use the thing from the color ramp because i'm i'm special number three we are going to take a mix rgb and we're going to mix the color of the first layer with the noise i said the color of the first layer i'm going to color of the first layer with the noise, and then use that as the factor. And we might have to flip these. Yeah. And so now, everywhere that the disc covers, we have the color of the first layer. We're going to add in another mix RGB. I'm going to drag that down. Use that as the factor. Use color of the second layer. We have to flip these. Like that. Then really, the rest of it's already working, but we have to drag it in anyways in case we want to change the color of it. Drag that in. Drag that down there. Factor. And color. I have to flip these. Yeah. Now, kind of.
kind of weird looking and you'll have to play around with it a bit. The exact values I used are a little messy to say the least. That uh, th that's actually say quite a lot, and a way to improve it would actually be if you took this right here and plug that in there instead, because it would factor in for the oceans. But that's that's just my recommendation. So like that, you just have the layers and then add them all together using the factors. I might have actually messed a part up. Nope. I'm just special. So now that we have all of that, we can mix this with our oceans. And we can use this, our ocean map, to uh, map it. Yeah, there's not much to say there. Let me put that there. And voila. We have our, uh, we have our planet. Now we're going to add an atmosphere to it. Because all good things have an atmosphere or something like that. I don't know. One more thing I want to add is we're going to add this scale value. I'm going to set 0.5. Drag it over to scale here. It just makes it a little less intense. So we're going to add the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is done doing a Fresnel node, which I'm not actually sure what the calculations are, but it looks like that. So I'm going to take the Fresnel node. I'm going to sub. Okay, well, it's actually math, but I'm going to subtract a quantity of it. And this quantity is going to be linked to a brand, a new value, called Atmosphere. I'm going to set it to just 0.1. So you can see it's already forming a sort of atmosphere thing. So we're going to set this to the emission strength. And then if we set the emission to white, we have a sort of atmosphere. Just to bump this up a bit, we're going to make it customizable with Atmosphere as a color now and drag and drop and then we have a green atmosphere we can add a bluish atmosphere then if you always want to you can do like a math multiply by like two or something also clamp it if you don't clamp it it'll go into negative values but something like that works. I don't recommend multiplying though. So you can just do something like that, make it white atmosphere if you want. And I think that will be everything for the planet part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these, select them all, control G. And control G is just going to put them into a node. And this node will allow you to easily change everything without having to have all these values linked up. And use tab to get in and out of nodes. And so I'm going to minimize all these, and then we're going to set all the names to be the correct names. So, let me just get all these in here real quick. We'll start with atmosphere, which is labeled as emission. So, if we press tab on it, press in, over here we have emission, and we're going to double click that and change it to atmosphere. Get rid of that. Layer one, it just labeled as the second color two. It's the first one, ocean color. So layer one is the second color two, and ocean color is the first one. So I'm going to call this ocean layer one. And then I'm assuming it just goes in order like that. And then what I can do is I can just paste the 
colors in for the default values. Paste. And so that should all work. And then for ocean, paste in, oh, the ocean was already set to a decent default value. Sea level, that will easily what is threshold, so sea level. Set that to zero by default. Seed, zero, but we don't really care about seed. And scale, scale we're definitely going to want to, oh wait, that's going to be, we're going to rename it to detail and we're going to have it set to five or you just, yeah, 7.5. And scale down here, we're going to want to have set 0.5 and value we're going to set to atmosphere. And so we can just, uh, it's not going to update the default values, so we can delete that. That's going to be called node group, so we can do shift a node group, and we can change that by setting the planet like that. So currently it's nothing, but then we, if we drag these in, voila, planet. We might want to like tone down the saturation of that, a bit darker, we can mess around with it all. And I'm actually going to click here and then click this up arrow to separate those up so it matches up better like that. So now we're going to start working on the clouds part. Okay, so on to the clouds. Now the clouds is actually going to be in this modifier itself as a volume scatter the thing is the volume scatter cannot be bigger than the mesh itself so we're gonna have to shift d to duplicate du du duplicate i'm gonna make this bigger by just a tiny bit by the way i just use control to snap scale if you hold without control with control being held it's just easier now i'm gonna take out this bsdf because we don't want the BSDF to be showing. And I'm going to add a volume scatter. This volume scatter is just going to create a volumetric, which is like gas and stuff. So voila, we have our volume scatter. Now we're going to control the transparency of it and the color and all that. So we can have our nice looking clouds. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to do something similar to the oceans. We're going to take a Musgrave texture. And it's going to be four-dimensional. So we're going to take in our W, W, scale, detail. And we're going to set it, we're going to bump, oopsies. We're going to actually take the dimension down to about 1.25-ish. Bump the detail up to about 11. And don't mess with the lacunarity. I don't know. I don't know that is stupid. So, all right. And so let's just add math. Greater than. Go there we go. <laughs> this is going to control how many clouds there are. And so we're going to hook this up to a brand new value and we're going to call it clouds. That's it. Just clouds. And we're going to mix this with an RGB. We're going to drag this up to here. That didn't work. We're gonna drag new, new value, new value, come on, up uh, here. We're gonna call this clouds again, but this is, it's the color this time. We're gonna do it multiply. And so now whatever value this is, is that, then we can change the amount of clouds. Like that, it's beautiful, and we can turn saturation down, value up, so we have white clouds, puffy white clouds. Drag this in the color for the volume scatter. Take this out, by the way, using control shift in here, creates an interesting thing called 10 viewers, so we want to go in and subtract that. Take that out, 
and now we have our clouds but it's kind of hard to see for some reason so what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about it for a second what could be causing it to be hard to see <laughs> and i am not sure let's that I figured, okay, so basically I accidentally hooked up the volume to that in there. So these are using the same material. So what we need to do is we need to duplicate this, call it clouds. Otherwise it's just going to be linked. And voila, there we go. We have the clouds around our planet. It looks nice. It's pretty, but they do not move. They do not animate. We want it to be animated. It's not displayed in the scene, but it is a feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Control T with Node Wrangler to create a new texture thing. We want to put a driver in here. Driver allows us to use outside variables like frame, and we do this by putting a hashtag, which creates a new driver like that. It's going to be purple if it's a driver. We're going to delete driver, hashtag frame, and if we do that, it's going to start moving at hyperspeed. We don't want that. So we're going to divide it by a big number like 100, not with the bracket that breaks the entire thing. And then it'll suddenly move. It's kind of hard to see because Cycles has to remember re-render re it every time. But we're going to apply this to the Y, too. You're just going to have to trust me. It works. If you render the whole thing, it'll be it'll turn out well. But uh, the clouds were so subtly moving. You might have been able to tell that those are different but if not that uh, that's that's a you problem you might want to get your eyes checked out and so now that we have our planet done we're going to want to add some of those hot rings so we're going to add a circle we're just going to scale it up then we're going to go tab to edit mode we're going to oopsies e to extrude and then scale outwards shift z so it's everything except the z-axis except that's not really necessary in this scenario because it can't scale on the z-axis anyways now we have this ring but it's it doesn't look like a planet ring that's that's a big problem so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new spanking material i'm just gonna use this old one called material called rings we can just instantly delete this we're not gonna use it First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a gradient texture. I'm just going to control T to get coordinates because we're going to need to offset this. We're going to call it, we're going to make it spherical. And so now we have this circle thing. We need to offset it a bit. So the center, we're going to do 0 0.5, 0 0.5 like that. And now it's centered. And actually we can plug this into a noise texture. And so we're going to take the noise texture and we're going to plug it into vector. Now it looks a bit strange, but if we just set it to factor and we scale it up a bit, it's creating this ring effect. I had mine scaled to about 16. We also want to crank the detail up, and I put in a bit of distortion, but you don't have to. I put it about like 5.75, something like that. It creates that cool effect. And I'm just going to do Control 2, which quickly applies subdivision subsurface of level 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap in a bright contrast, and I'm just going to throw the contrast up to 2.4, and it makes it look like that. What we're going to do with this now is we're going to use this as a factor for a shader mixture, a little concoction. So we're going to make a mix shader, and we're going to create another mix shader. We're going to plug this mix shader into that mix shader, and then we're going to plug this into that. And what all this is going to do is we're just going to create a diffuse, except it's transparent. So we're going to need translucent plugged into this, diffuse plugged into that. Plug, okay, this is going to be about 0.8. And then we're going to add a tran transparent, plug it into that. has to be on the bottom. Plug that into surface, voila. And then if you want to, we can mix this. With you got to do a mix RGB. Set this to about 0.65. Drag that there, and then put this into displacement, and it bumps it up a bit. 
And if you want to, you can go into here and set it to displacement only, but that's going to make it look weird, so don't do that. Never mind, ignore everything I just said. So now we have this beautiful planet with rings, but uh, it the lighting doesn't look good. So we're going to go into world, and we're going to do control T, and then we're going to open and just do HDR, and we have all these things called HDRIs, which if I just pause real quick, you can get all these HDRI things from a website called HDRI Haven, or we can go to HDRIs, you can go to HDRIs, and they've got all these. Now I'm going to use this one called Blobberian Night. And it creates this cool blue green. And with this, we can delete our original source of light. And so I'm going to select all these C and then scroll wheel to do all that to do what I just did. And I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna move these back. Boom. Right, so we're gonna add our ocean in. So we want to just add a plane, go to modifiers, and then ocean. I'm going to drag this down. All right, so we have our ocean. And I'm going to bump up the resolution in the render, but not in the viewport, so we do not crash, speaking of which I should probably save again. So this doesn't look like an ocean. That looks like snow. That's disgusting. That looks like snow. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new material. We're going to call it ocean. And... <clears throat> and... What we're going to do... So what we're going to do is we're just going to very simply we're gonna leave the specular as it is and we're going to leave most of this as it is except the transmission. We're going to bump the transmission up and we're going to turn the roughness down like that. Very close to zero. The closer to zero it is, the less distorted it's going to be. And so now we have this very nice scene. We can drag this up a bit, change the rotation. Make it look more like the original. So now that we have this, I'm actually going to rotate the camera a tiny bit. Lift it up. I'm just trying to get it to look nice. The original was in 1080 by 1080, like that. So if you want to scale it to match that, there you go. And I didn't scale the planet with the clouds. That's going to look a bit weird. So now we have this. We have our planet. Uh-oh. And this is why we save. That could have been very... It might still be very bad. Okay. This is why we save frequently. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to scale this up a bit. Just to be a bit more proportional with the clouds like that. Look at that. It's beautiful. Uh, the rings are a bit in the water. You're going to want to reposition that a tiny bit. Drag it back. Doesn't matter. You just move the water forward. So now we have this. You can mess with the water a tiny bit. I'm going to go into waves. Make the waves maybe a bit more extreme. I don't know. But we're not entirely done with the water yet. The watered material, that is. Because we're going to take a Fresnel. And th this is the same thing. Or a Fresnel. I'm sorry. Same thing as earlier, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually take a color ramp, and we're going to pinch it down. We're going to pinch it down really tight, drag this into the emission strength, and then we can set the emission to a color like like green-blue. Then we have this kind of glowy water near the edge, and you might want to tone it down a bit. You can tone it down like that, or if you don't want to tone it down, you just want to make it less widespread, you can do something like that. There's a bunch of ways you can change this. You can even invert it. But, uh, so now that we have this, I'm going to change the color this time. Maybe something like that. Yeah. 
all that's left is like the background and to scale this up a tiny bit. And it didn't scale the planet with it again. Scale up a tiny bit, you know, quote unquote tiny bit. And then scale the planet up again because we forgot to do that. It didn't select it again. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, and we have that, we can render. We can render, and so it's going to take a bit, so I will just skip back when it's... Okay, it's rendered, and we have this really cool render, and uh, now we're just going to have to do some compositing stuff to add the cool background and the glow effects. So uh, we're going to head on over to compositing, use nodes, and if we just control shift this, because Node Wrangler exists, it puts it in the background, and we love it, and it's great. So, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find this cool space background. I have one downloaded already, and it's cleverly named Space 2 in my downloads. Isn't that great? I'm pretty sure that's it. Nope, I used Space 3 for the last one. Space 3, I'm really smart. And so this doesn't quite match our lighting, so we're going to drag in the hue saturation value, and we're going to change it to it's a bit of a yellowish green. Yeah, a bit like this, maybe. Measure around the saturation a bit. Then we're going to crop it, because there is a watermark. You don't need to do this part, but I need to do this part. Eh, I won't do it, because why not? Okay, but uh, I'm going to, then I just need to scale it. So we're going to scale it to the render size, so it is the same size as our render object. And actually, you do need to crop it, you're going to need to crop it the same size as the render, like that, 1080, 1080. Woo! Okay. Then crop image size, like that. And so now it's cut down to 1080 by 1080. And you actually don't need the scale after that. I don't know what I was thinking. But I'm going to keep it in there just in case I was thinking something correct and I'm just being stupid. And so now we have this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a... We're going to take a mix node. And we're going to drop scale. And not the scale. Oops. We're going to drop the image at the bottom like that. And we're going to use the alpha, the transparency, as the factor. Like that. And whoa! That's cool. That's really cool looking. And then we're going to add a glare. And we're going to use a fog glow. And just set this to something like 9, and you can lower the threshold a bit if you want to. But ooh, that's a bit, uh, it's a bit crazy, so <laughs> I'm going to keep it relatively high. But then again, your scene is probably going to look different. So who knows? Maybe you do want a low threshold, so it's a bit more. Yeah, but I'm going to keep it at 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Let's do 0.8 for this one. Nope, that's 0.9. And then let's do render, view render. Oh, this gave it a second to update, maybe. Figure a note, sure. And that's our render. That's the final. Yep. So, we've completed our render. We've created a procedural shader. It's all working very nicely. And, and yeah, I'll probably make a thumbnail or something. I don't know.